show you one more problem is again here. Okay, so this is a, and then also read the question carefully. Feel like a problem number eight. Okay, I ask the students to write down two uh, uh, two iterative integrals in different orders, then evaluate the one of them. But on most many students just set up one integral, one iterative integral, and they evaluate. Okay, so so reading the question carefully though when you do the problem okay okay so you know that's why some students only get a 98 percent of the of the of the uh, 80 percent of the test they even thought everything is done and perfect okay because you miss you missed some part of the question okay so here's a here's a problem i want to discuss right this is a double integral okay and here's a function Okay, the domain is described by, it can be any function, right? And this is a, this is a, a, a the domain, right? I'm going to use this one uh, for, uh, well, this is why I call x squared, here's a one, zero. So it depends, this time I'm going to change it to this area, okay? So this is a D, <clears throat> right? This is a D and we're trying to eat, uh, set up the iterative integral Okay, the function is uh, all sides of the reticle is zero, you know, zero, you know, you can, you can, uh, yeah, you can, uh, what you can do is there are a couple ways to do that. You know, you can assume the function is defined a whole square and, but, but uh, in the upper part, the function is zero, okay? So in that part is function zero. So what you can do is at the very beginning, you can have, you know, you can have a double integrals, a iterative integrals, so the, the interval is also from zero to one. But uh, yeah, you assume that here's F, uh, F is gonna be zero, okay, on this part. Okay. So this is zero here. So if you assume extend the function to that area, so it is a function defined a rectangle. So now you can, it doesn't matter which part uh, you're going, yeah, you can put the dx, dy here, or you can also uh, dy, dx here. But uh, yeah, it's better I can put, I can, uh, to distinguish that, I put f tilde, okay? So f tilde here is zero, and f tilde here is equal to f, okay? So you extend f to, to the whole function. So this is a equal to the uh, the integral of f two dot da on this uh, rectangular. If it's a rectangular domain, then then it's easy to uh, uh, write down two iterative integral. Now, if we use the first one, okay, you look at the inside, right? So y is a fixed, and so this is the integral of f tilde with respect to x. So why is it fixed? With respect to x means, why is it fixed? It going through that, right? So it's clear that uh, this function f tilde is gonna be zero if x is, uh, if x is less than uh, square y, right? So let me look at the picture again here, okay? So here's for the fixed y, right? Why is it fixed? And this is the integral of the function along this line, okay? Along this line, but you notice that, uh, uh, you notice that f2 dies zero for, for x, because this is a point x, right? For x, uh, uh, actually the y is a fixed, the x is a square y. So for x less than square y, greater than equal zero. So this part is gonna be zero. So that's why the integral, you can start from square y to one and the function is going to be, uh, yeah, the function is going to be the origin function, okay? Similarly, for the, for the above one, okay? So this is a, another iterative integral. Okay, and we are going to use this uh, same picture. Okay, so this is a, a 
right? You focus on the integral inside. So X here is a fixed. When X is a fixed, okay? You notice that along this, the vertical and Y changes from zero to one, but only when Y is going to be uh, smaller than this, right? This is for the fixed X, um, F two da is going to be zero for Y uh, greater than X square less than equal to one because for x is a fixed, for a fixed x, this is a y value, right? Y value from zero to one, but when the y is greater than x squared, it is on this line. So this line, so the function is zero. So you can ignore it. So that's why it's from zero to x squared. And uh, this is a, yeah, this is a iterative. Group. So uh, we never have a, we never have an x squared or side, you know, this two integrals uh, uh, two integral symbols. Some students put integral from zero to x squared and they put the all side. That doesn't make any sense. So as the integral <coughs> all side, all side uh, the interval is always a, uh, I know, uh, consists of two constants. Does not involve any variables. Okay. So this is a typical example uh, show you how to set up iterative integrals. I hope you understand. You need a more practice, okay? And uh, the part, the difficult part is to to draw the pictures, show that you know, yeah. If you understand how to how to, if you know how to draw the pictures, you probably and know how to solve the problem. Something was a picture, yeah. Then you just write down two iterative integrals, so then that usually it's wrong, okay? Uh, all right. So now let's talk about the area. Okay, we're going to study area, how to solve the problem. If uh, if this is a domain D, okay, in the X, Y plane, and then the area, okay, so DA, let's see, and that's a, if we divide, we, we, we divide as this region into many uh, small uh, squares. So the area of this domain is actually can be written as a double integral of d dA. And a dA is a is called uh, element, okay, an area element in mathematics. Okay. And this is just d dx dy, okay, the product of those two. Okay, there was a tiny change in, you know, this is general idea, then tiny change. So so this is a, this is the area, the small area of this rectangle. Okay, the area of this, yeah, the area of this DA represents the area of this small rectangle with edge length of dx and dy. Okay, so that's why you can uh, change it to this to the double integral. You know, yeah. So this double integral can evaluate it using iterative integrals. The question is. How can I, how can I, uh, uh, how can I find the area of the surface in the space? It's curved, not a flat. Okay. okay. It's curved and not a flat. Okay. They are, uh, so we just consider the graph first. Okay. Yeah, every surface in this, in the three dimensional space locally can be viewed as a, a graph, okay? So this is a graph of F on the domain D. So we have a D here, okay? So how do we find that? The integral of function is actually represents the volume and the loop, okay? The integral function, so this is not the area. To find the, uh, so how to do that, you divide this into uh, many squares, okay? On the, on the top, okay? On the top, uh, on the loop, right? So what you get is, you will also get those curves, the corresponding curves, right? Okay. So, the question is, how do you, how do you estimate that small, uh, how do you estimate that small piece? Okay, how do you estimate that small piece? 
the area of that small piece. Okay, this is piece is above above that uh, uh, square. Okay, above that square. The idea is uh, uh, very simple. So on this uh, on this curved piece, okay. So this curved piece, let's zoom in, okay. So that is a uh, yeah. This is a yellow part, and now we put it here. Okay. We have a two tangent vector. Okay. So then you get a parallelogram. Okay. So this area, this small area, can be estimated approximated by the area of this parallelogram, okay? So this vector, the tangent vector, how, how big of this vector, right? If the, and uh, the square here is dx, this ends to dy. So this side will be uh, the tangent vector u, okay? And uh, yeah, so this is uh, the tangent vector uh, multiplied by, I think it's dx, yeah. So this is, v is the, the tangent vector, okay? So tangent vector and uv, okay? Those are two tangent vectors, okay? And uh, the, we have to scale it down, right? So it's dx and dy, okay? What is u? u is going to be, uh, yeah, how to find it? u is actually, you see, you fix the, if uh, you fix the y value, okay? Fix the y value, you get this curve, okay? This curve can be described by phi uh, fixed y value. So phi x is gonna be x and y and f of x, y, right? <coughs> so that's a graph, right? Yeah. Uh, so fix the y, so, so you, when you differentiate, you get the one, zero, f, x, y. So that's a derivative, okay? The tangent vector to the curve, okay? But we only take the small piece, uh, you normalize it. So this is going to be one, zero, f, x, y, and dx, okay? Uh, all right, similarly, this will be uh, a zero, one, f, y, x, y, dy, okay? So you get a you get a parallelogram tangent to the surface at that particular point. Okay. So the area of the parallelogram is going to be approximation of the area of this curved uh, piece of. Okay. So so that is going to be the cause of the area element. The area element dA. Okay can be expressed as, okay, the area of that rectangle, uh, that parallelogram. So what I'm gonna do is going to be uh, um, the length of U dx wedge product dy, okay? So uh, this is a, a take, the, take them out, this is U wedge V dx dy. All right, uh, uh, I probably have to use a different notation. Yeah, let's use the S instead of surface area, okay? A is usually on the on top, okay? This is the area, okay? So this is again the S. I'm going to figure out that S, okay? So this is actually is DA, right? Yeah, DA is, uh, is, uh, is on here, so DA. The corresponding piece is ds, the area element. We want to find a relationship between ds and dA. Okay, and uh, if the small, um, yeah, this this rectangle, the area is dx dy, right? Then the same rectangle, you know, you corresponding to a curved, a piece of curved uh, surface. This piece of curved surface can be approximated by a parallelogram. And that paragraph, the area of that paragraph is going to be, yeah, the area of paragraph is going to be uh, uh, the norm of the cross product of the 
yeah, of these two Kenyan vectors. Okay, so the so cross product. Let's take a look at the cross product. Uh, I just want to give you the formula here. The so cross product. Okay, uh, zero one, f x, y, right? Okay, I think this cross product is going to be. If I'm correct, I just. Okay. So you get this, you got this vector. Okay. So this cross product, yeah. So now the lens, so DS is going to be the lens of the cross product that's going to be FX, XY square, FY, XY square, and the plus one square. Okay, so that's D. Okay, that's a relationship. Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, this graph, uh, I need a, a, I put a notation here. Let's call it M. Okay, M is the graph, that piece of curve. This is above the domain D. Okay, so so the area, the surface area M, is going to be Kind of double integral of uh, of a ds uh, uh, over m, but this is just a formal notation. Okay, so you add all the uh, small area together. Okay, you will get um, uh, the total area surface area. But this one, just like a transform coordinates change, like a polar coordinate, you cannot evaluate this directly. So what you do is you change it to the Double integral, okay, and uh, this is a part we have to put here x square, f sub y square plus one and d a. Okay, so uh, if you don't understand the previous part, how do we show get this formula? You just need to memorize this uh, uh, this formula for the for the surface area. Okay, so this is the surface area, <coughs> okay, of the of the surf of the graph. The graph. Uh, the idea I know already explained to you. The idea is uh, trying to estimate. Uh, yeah, trying to estimate that curve the surface using parallelogram, and the, the parallelogram, uh, the two sides are determined by the tangent vectors to the curves above above this uh, rectangle. Okay. Then, uh, then the, the cross product, the normal cross product, gives you, gives you this part, gives you this part, gives you ds. Okay. Okay, that's all we need. And uh, yeah, we have this formula. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at some examples, and uh, we can. Uh, we can uh, use this yeah, formula to find the surface area, okay? So the surface is given by uh, 6x plus 4y plus 2z equals 1, okay? That lines inside the cylinder, okay? X squared plus Y squared equals twenty-five. Now, for this uh, for this course, you really needed to know how to draw the pictures. Okay, otherwise it's harder to set up the integrals. Okay, first of all, let's look at the way this uh, how does it look like. Okay, this is a cylinder, right? This is a cylinder, and six uh, X plus four Y plus two Z equals one is going to be a plane, but it's hard to draw the plane, okay? It's cut through the cylinder like this, okay? It's cut through the cylinder. So the surface, okay, where's my, uh, where's my, uh, yeah. All right, the surface here is actually a flat. It looks like an ellipse, okay? This is a piece. We need to find the area. Okay, so this is a graph above the disk. 
So D is a disk. Okay. So this surface M, M is, is a graph of some function above the D. Okay, above the D. Above the D. Okay, so the question is, what is that function F? Okay, you have to rec you have to view this as a graph sum function. Well, we just solve for Z, right? So six X plus four Y plus two Z equals one. You got two Z equals one minus six X minus four Y. And you divide by two, you will get one half three X minus two Y. So this is my F X Y, right? That's it. It's very simple. Okay. Then, then you can create the partial derivatives. It's going to be negative three, and that's negative two. Okay. So ds is going to be fx square, f sub y square plus one, and the negative three square, negative two square plus one. Okay. And da, sorry, da is dx dy. It's a it's element on the, on the, on the, you know, on the domain. Okay, domain is so, okay. It's an area element on the domain. So this is gonna be nine plus one. So it's a square 14, right? It's a square root of 14. And then the, it's constant, great. So the area, there's okay, a surface area that's called A, uh, uh, yeah, area, let's write down area, okay? I don't want to use A here. Area of this surface M is going to be the double integral of D and the square root of 14 DA, okay? So, so it's constant, 14 is the square, 14 is constant. So that's just the area of the D, okay? And the area of D is a, is a disk. Uh, so its radius is going to be five. Okay, so pi five square, right? So that's the answer, okay? So it's going to be pi r square, right? It's 25 square 14 pi, okay? So that's what we did here. Yeah. Now let's take a look at the more complicated problems. And this time the, so the radical is not gonna be constant. The surface, is given by uh, this equation. Okay, it's hard to draw it, right? So that lines above the of the triangle. What wow, the triangle? Okay, uh, the triangle is given by this vertices. Um, the triangle given by the vertex is zero, zero, two, zero, and two and the four. Wow. Okay. So this is as a domain D is a, is a triangle. Okay. So it's hard to draw it honestly. So this is, let's draw the D first. The D and uh, uh, Y is going to be, yeah, where's the triangle? It's a, it's a, it's in the XY plane, right? So X, Y plane. Okay. So that's the first point. Second point, two and zero. The third point, two and uh, two and the four, somewhere here. Okay. So this is a, yeah, this is a, a yeah, this line should be parallel to the Y axis. All right, so this is a domain. Uh, I'm going to domain, I'm going to use this color, okay? So this is a D in the XY plane. Okay, where's my surface? Uh, surface is a graph. 
So I have to solve it. 4z equals x squared minus 2y plus 5. So z is going to be uh, 5 over 4. You know, just divide by 4. Okay, uh, uh, I'm not going to divide each coefficient. Okay. Okay, let's write down this. Okay, uh, so this is my function f of x, right? So to draw the graph, uh, uh, I just need to find uh, the value of, uh, of a z at those four vertex, above these four vertexes of, of the triangle. So, so f zero, zero, it's gonna be five over four. F two and a zero is going to be two square minus two times zero plus five, which is going to be a nine over four. Okay, F two and the four, and that's two square minus two times four plus five. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to get? So eight, eight. Okay, four minus eight is negative four. So that's going to be a quarter, okay? So this is very lower point, okay? Here's about, here's a, here's a point about this point, right? Another point, it's, it's here, okay, almost. Then the, the, uh, oh, the zero, zero is here, okay? And this much high, actually, okay? Yeah, let me, uh, those are three points in the space, in the space, okay? So I'm going to connect to them. It's going to be like that. Okay, this is our roof. Okay. Uh, colored. Okay. So that is a that is a surface in the space. It's above. Uh, it's above the triangle. Yeah, it's above the triangle. Okay, you can uh, you, you know you can visualize it like that. It's 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 like that's much better, right? It's a 3D. It's not easy to draw a 3D picture. All right, so this is a this is a surface. Okay, right, this is a surface. So we needed to find out. So how do you how do you um, how do you find the area of this surface? Well, it's curved, right? So you, uh, what they do is using formula, you have to find the derivatives, the partial derivatives, right? It's going to be uh, half of x here. If y is going to be negative one half, okay? So so um, ds is going to be square root of f x square f y squared plus one dA, okay, dA is dx y, okay? Yeah, dA is gonna be dx dy, okay? All right, so let's, let's look at this. It's x squared plus one quarter plus one, right? And dA, okay. Okay, well, uh, so the area of that surface M, that surface M is gonna be the double integral of a D of this X squared of four plus five of four and D A, okay? <coughs> now we focus on this triangle domain, okay? The triangle domain, remember, this is a vertex, right? And the x axis, y axis. So that'll be two and a zero, 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 right? Another point is a two and a four, I think, right? Two and a four. Yeah, let's go back to, uh, uh, yeah. The first component is, is two. So this is our domain D, 
Okay, so this is a domain name. But uh, all right. All right, so this is a uh, this is a picture. Now, double integral over this, right? You can let's set up two iterate integrals first. So, what's the what what's the equation of this line? This line, the equation of this line, is going to be a single y equals two x, right? It's obvious the slope is two. Okay, y equals two x. Okay, so let's let's write down. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll let you to try first. Okay, write down two iterative integrals and choose one of them to evaluate. Okay, and you will find out one of them is better than the other one. Okay, I'll give you one minute. Okay, this is a good practice. You should be able to set up two iterates, two, okay, both iterative integrals in different orders. Okay, and then, uh, then, uh, then compare with my answers, okay? So this is a domain D. I, I hope you got uh, the answer. Okay, let's let's uh, uh, let's look at the first one. Okay, dx should be outside. Okay, then dy inside. Okay, so x. What is a what is a, a interval for x? X can be any from zero to two, right? Clear. So you take x, and for the fixed x, what is the possible value for y value inside this domain? And uh, clearly, y starts from zero, right? And uh, the top, okay, the upper limit depends on x, so that's 2x. So you get x squared of 4 plus 5 over 4, that is, okay. Another one uh, is going to be dy outside, okay? Okay, and you look at the upper, uh, as the, the domain for y. Well, for the domain for the y, uh, y is between zero and the four, clearly, okay? Then uh, x, okay? Upper limit for x is two, right? For the fixed y, use a horizontal line. The uh, lower uh, bound for the x variable, it depends on y. So it'll be half of a y, okay? So you get x squared plus five over four. Now, which one is better, right? Which one is better? For the first one, you have to, evolve, you have to evaluate integral with respect to x. Uh, for the integral like a square of x squared plus five. If you forgot that, maybe it should give up. You should try the first one, okay? This is a constant with respect to y. So that'll be two x and x squared plus five over four and dx. I can take a four out. I get x 
square x plus five dx. You see, it'd be much easier. Then you let u to be x squared plus five and du equals two x dx, okay? So the integral when x equals zero, when x equals zero, u is a five, when x equals two, and then u is nine, okay? And that will be square over u and the two x dx is half of du, okay? Then you find the entire derivative of that will be three over two, u to the three over two, right? The two over three times u to the three over two, okay? When you differentiate, you get half of, okay? So the answer will be one third, nine to the three over two minus five to the three over two. Okay. So that is, that is uh, the surface area of that piece. Okay, but that if you want to try the other one, it's I think it's more more difficult. The question is, do you still remember the the, the integral of uh, yeah? Do you still remember the integral formula for this? Okay, this is on the back side of the book. You can find out, but we are not going to try to evaluate this kind of complicated, difficult uh, integrals here. Okay, so that's why. I'm keeping asking you to set up a two iterative integrals for the same double integral, okay? And one of them may be much easier to evaluate than the other one, okay? Yeah, you have to, you have to, and this, yeah, if you still have trouble to set up iterative integrals, go to that section Okay, do all the exercise, not only just a homework ass assignment, and there's other problems in the same portion of the exercise set. Okay, and, uh, and, uh, and when you finish it, look at the an answer on the back side of the book to check whether it's correct or not. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, let M be the graph of the function uh, f x y equals two over three x to the three over two y to the three over two. Okay, over the domain D, the domain D is a rectangle, is a square tree. Okay. So set up an integral right, for the surface area. Okay. And if possible, let's try to evaluate and uh, use the two iterative integrals. Okay. And try to evaluate the one of them. All right, uh, can we draw the graph? Uh, kind of, you know, you, you can look at this graph, okay? This is a graph above, the rec above, this, uh, above this square, okay? So you need to draw the two four points above the, above the vertexes of square. So when x equals zero, zero, so it's here. When x equals one, y equals zero, so you get, uh, somewhere here, that above one, okay? When x equals uh, zero, y equals one, is this is another point. But when x equals one, y equals one, I think it would be a little bit higher than that. So it's, uh, it's difficult to draw it, looks like that, if you see from end of that part, okay? So this is, a, this is how does it look like, okay? Okay, this is a piece right above the above the square. Okay, it's above the square. All right. Uh, right. So now we have to set up the integral uh, 
right? For the for this one. So all we have to do is find the DS. Okay. We need to find the derivative, partial derivative. When I differentiate, I get just x to the one half. This is going to be y to the one half. Okay, the so coefficients are canceled out. So ds is going to be fx square, fy square plus one square, and that is da. Okay, da is just dx dy. Okay, da is <coughs> dx dy. Okay, so when you differentiate, you get x, and when you square y plus one. <coughs> Right. So the surface integral, uh, 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 this surface area of M is going to be the double integral, right? M ds. Let's change it to the double integral over this over this uh, rectangle. Okay. Over this uh, square, actually. My question is, uh, how do we evaluate? Actually. It's a square, so it's easy. It doesn't matter which one is first. Uh, all you have to do is just, uh, okay, you just evaluate the one of the iterative integral. And the, it's the same, doesn't matter which one is first. The order doesn't matter here, okay? Right, so let's find out, let's find the entire derivative of this function. So entire derivative of this function you see, it's, uh, it's with respect to x. So square of x plus k, the entire derivative, you know, is going to be uh, uh, two over three, x plus k to the, to the three over two, okay? When you differentiate, you get x plus k, right? So that's why you get two over three, x plus y plus one, and so we have a two, evaluate the two endpoints, and that dy. Okay, when, you, when, when x equals one, you get two plus y. When x equals zero, you get uh, y plus one to the three over two. All right, so now we have a trouble to evaluate this integral. Well, it's not actually. we we find the entire derivative again for each of them because when it's y plus k, three over two, right? So the entire derivative will be two over five y plus k to the five over two. Okay, when you differentiate, you get y plus k over five, okay? So, so let's uh, write down the entire derivative. The first one will be two plus y to the five over two. The second one is five over two, right? Y plus one. So evaluate the two endpoints. Okay, uh, the first part, we plug one, so three to the five over two, minus two to the five over two. That's the first part. When you plug zero, it's three, five, two over two to the five over two, minus one to the five over two. Okay, uh, that's it. You know, you can simplify a little bit. It can simplify a little bit. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this here in this form. Okay. So this is our surface area of that strange surface. Yeah, so let me go back to the, let me explain to you the formula again. So you have a surface, right? Uh, this is above the x, uh, above the uh, x, y, uh, above the x, y plane, okay? So uh, 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 rectangle here, okay? So corresponding piece will be curved surface, okay? Now, the relationship between the area of these two pieces is this is a ds, okay, the area, the surface of ds, this is the area is da. 
So the relationship between them, there's a fact difference, okay? So ds, what we're trying to tell you is, ds is gonna be one plus x square, fy square, and the ds, that's the diff, that's the difference between those two, okay? And uh, it's always larger than, <laughs> you were surprised, right? This number is always larger than one, right? This fact, so that means this, this curved surface above, above, the, above this uh, uh, rectangle has more area than the, as this rectangle, okay? Right? Yeah. So if you have a surface over some domain, this is a graph of the function, then definitely this one has a larger area than the area of the domain in the, in the XY plane, okay? So if you get a small number, some computation mistakes there, okay? Smaller number. So that means that if this is an M, that's a, that, is a, that is a D, okay? So the area an M usually is greater than or equal to the area of, of the domain D, okay? Yeah, just because this is going to be integral of the square of the one plus f of x square plus f sub y square. Okay. This is just a simple observation, you know. So when you get the answer, you're not sure there's no, you know, if how do you check whether there are some mistakes or not? If you find out that the area of the surface is smaller than the areas of the domain under that, <laughs> then there are some computation mistakes there. Okay, our next problem is we're trying to find a, yeah, have you found, have we found the area of the sphere, right? Trying to find the area of the sphere, okay? Let's consider the sphere, consider the sphere, okay? Right, so uh, x squared plus y squared equals uh, plus z squared equals the r squared. <clears throat> we, we learned the surface area formula, right? Okay. We also calculated the volume. We, right, we, did, right, we did that, right? We calculated the volume. So the volume, uh, yeah, the volume is going to be uh, twice of the of the of the double integral, this is a d, okay? D is going to be x squared plus y squared less than equal to r squared. So it's a double integral, okay? Uh, the function is going to be, yeah, z is going to be square root of r squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the volume and the user polar coordinates. We find out this is four pi over three R cube, okay? We already did that. The question is, what is the surface area? Okay. What is the surface area? Okay. We already know the formula. We learned that even in high school, but then we never gave a proof. Okay. So this, the surface area of the sphere is going to be the double of the surface area of the upper hemisphere. Okay. So the surface area of the sphere okay, is going to be the double integral of the upper hemisphere. Uh, this is a sphere we denote by S, okay? S2R. The so upper hemisphere is S2R uh, plus the lower uh, upper hemisphere is going to be S minus, okay? S plus square R and DS, okay? So this is going to be the graph of twice of that, right? This is going to be the graph of this function. Okay, that's my f of x. 
right? So this can be changed to uh, the double integral of a D. D is a disk, okay? And uh, here's a fx square, fy square plus one dA, okay? So we change the double integral, but this double integral is slightly different from this double integral, okay? This double integral does not, for the volume, does not have a partial derivative. And this double integral, have to find the partial derivative. So let's calculate what is fx. Well, when you differentiate above, okay, you will get, okay, when you differentiate, you get negative x, okay? Yeah, fy. Yeah, you can differentiate, use a chain rule, okay? So that's what you get. <coughs> Not too bad, okay? So I'm going to add them together. So what I'm going to get here is going to be x squared. Mm, when you square it's r squared minus x squared minus y squared. Here's y squared. R squared minus x squared minus y squared plus, plus what? Plus one. So add them together. Okay. On the top, you have x squared plus y squared plus r squared minus x squared. Minus. So you only have r squared left. Wow. Okay. So the area of the sphere is going to be the double, twice of double integral of d over the square root of this. It's going to be r. D, 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 A, okay. Now, this is the integral over the disk with the radius R, okay? So the natural idea is to change it to the polar coordinates, okay? Change the polar coordinates, be careful, my R is different from that R, okay? So I need a, what I'm gonna do is, I use a, a different coordinates row cos and theta, I cos rho sine theta, okay? So rho is between zero and r, theta is between zero and two pi, okay? So now this is gonna be double integral from zero. Yeah, d, that's my d bar, okay? And here's r, okay? And that below, d, d a bar, right? D by is the, is gonna be D rho D set, okay? D set, it doesn't matter which one's first, okay? So now you can have, uh, that's from zero to R, from zero to two pi, okay, since uh, it's constant, it's independent of theta. So you can take two pi out, I get four pi, Okay, can we evaluate this integral? The answer is yes. We are able to evaluate this integral. So let u to be r square minus rho square, okay? du equals negative two rho d rho. Okay, we have a rho time thing, right? So when uh, rho equals zero, I get r square. When low equals r, I get zero. Okay, great. And that's the square of u. And here's r. And uh, low times d rho is gonna be negative half of du, okay? All right, so four pi divided by two, so it's two pi, zero r square, and I have r out, and u to the negative one half du, okay? So let's find the anti-derivative of this function. The anti-derivative of this function, I think is two u to the one half, okay? So evaluate at r square. And then I get four pi r and four pi r square. Okay, great. See, so we get the area of the sphere, four pi r square. It's interesting four pi r squared. Okay, so now you have 
for the sphere, right? The surface area of the sphere is four pi r square. The volume of the sphere is gonna be four pi r cubed divided by three. So there's a, some relationship between them. If they all have four pi r there, okay? So if you have a smaller sphere with radius t, what is the surface area of the sphere? So the surface area of the sphere with radius t is gonna be four pi t squared, okay? I want to give you a very interesting identity. So the volume of the sphere with radius r is gonna be the integral from zero to r of the area of, of this family of the spheres, okay? All right, so that's the relationship between the volume. Volume is just the integral of the surface area, okay? Right? You have a family of a surface, a family of the spheres occupy the whole ball and the each, uh, the each sphere with radius t has an has a area. So this is going to be four pi t squared. When you integrate, you get four pi t cubed divided by three, okay? So roughly speaking, the volume is just the integral of the, of the of the surface area of the cross sections, okay, of the solid. You know, you cut the, yeah, you can, uh, uh, if you have a, if a, if a, if you have a, uh, for example, how do you find uh, the volume of the body, right? How to find the volume of the potato, right? You cut the potato into slice. And then, uh, yeah, this is a potato yeah, in the space. So you you draw the line and you cut, that's a mass 153, right? So this is a coordinate line T and that is the area of AT, right? Okay, so the volume is gonna be the just yes, integral from A to B, right? And that is gonna be the air, integral of the area. Of the cross sections, yeah. yeah. And here, our cross section, we use a, we use a, we use a, we use a spheres. Okay, you cut the sphere, slides, shear by shear. Okay, cut the sphere shear by shear, and you measure the area of each shear, then you integrate it. Then you get the the area of the sphere. Okay, so. There are, there are many type of a knife we can use, a flat knife, that's what we did for the potato, we cut it into slides. Do you remember in Mass 165, we call the cylindric shears? So we use a, a cylindric knife to cut uh, cut the, the solid, okay? And uh, you increase the radius gradually, so the hole is getting bigger, bigger. Then you cut through, then you measure the area of, each slide, cylindric slide, slide, right? Uh, then integrate them, you get a total volume. Okay, now I also give you here as examples, you can use a spheric knife, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. And you increase, uh, uh, yeah, you increase the, the radius of the spheric knife. And each time you get a sphere, the area of the sphere, okay, and then, uh, then you integrate, you get total volume of the, of the ball, okay? All right. Now, if I ask you to find the sphere, uh, surface area of the sphere, only the one portion of that, how do you do that? Okay, so if we change 
uh, the problem a little bit, okay? I ask it to find, uh, so this is a capital R, the radius, right? And uh, I cut this small piece with the radius little r, okay? So how do we find this surface area? Okay, uh, the picture is very clear. Let's set up an integral, okay? We're not, we probably don't want to evaluate it right now. Okay, set up this integral, okay, in the x, y. Everything else is the same, just to figure it out. Okay, this piece Z is gonna be square over R square minus X square minus Y square, right? Okay. So, uh, so I need a, what I need is This is a graph above the disk. This is a graph above a disk, a D, okay? So D here is gonna be X and Y, X squared plus Y squared less than R squared. Less than R squared, okay? Oh, this is capital R, So Yeah, the graph, still portion of the graph of the, portion of the sphere, so that's capital R. But this is over x squared plus y squared less than equal to r squared, right? Okay, so the surf, uh, the area of that, of that, that piece, m, is gonna be the double integral of a d, right? That's a new d here. And uh, what do we got here, right? We got one plus fx squared, F sub y squared dA, okay. And we already did this computation, I think. We got, yeah, we got, uh, we, we already did the computation, okay. So this is, uh, this is our command, okay. So we have a capital R, Right. All you have to do is to evaluate this double integral over, over this uh, smaller disk okay, with a smaller radius, okay? And uh, just same, do it, do it the same way. It's a, it's a circular, right, region. So you use a polar coordinate, okay? So if you use a polar coordinate, let's still use a row cosine theta, y equals low sine theta, uh, right? So this is going to be the domain D bar is going to be rho is greater than less than equal to, right? And the theta is less, uh, less than between zero and two pi. So that will be D bar. And here's the rho, square, uh, uh, R square, right, minus Low square and the row and D A bar, okay? And then you write down these two integrals. Okay, two pi, that is a little r. D O D theta. Then we get to you know, some formulas for the area of that small piece, okay? So let's try to evaluate this integral again. We use a, we use a substitution. I think I'm going to switch, or I'll take a two pi out here. Yeah, this is a constant, okay? So you let u to be r square minus rho square. Again, du equals negative two rho, d, right? So, okay, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, rho is zero, you get capital R square. When rho is R, you get capital R square minus little r square. Okay, this R, and that's a square of U, and here's negative half du, okay? 
uh, repeat the same to, to cancel out. Uh, that's the square root d u. Okay, so the entire derivative of a, of that one is going to be u to the uh, to um, to the one half two, right? Yeah, this is the entire derivative. So okay, so let's. Uh, Let's evaluate this r to the, oh, it's one half, okay. And r, right, minus, okay. So this is the answer, okay. When, when, uh, when little r increases, then the, the surface area increases. Okay, so this is about upper hemisphere actually, right? Portion of upper hemisphere. Look at this. This is R, right? That's capital R. Okay. After you get this result, you have to look at it carefully, right? So when little r goes to zero, okay, the area, right, of this M, okay, this is a, this is the M, okay. So this area approaches zero as little r approaches zero. It's clear, right, the difference. This approaches four pi, no, two pi r. Uh, wait a minute, where's my r square? <laughs> I'm supposed to get r, okay, there's a capital r here, I forgot, yeah. No, that was a capital r here. Okay, so this will be uh, as, Little r approaches capital. Two pi r square is the area of the upper hemisphere. Okay, so as uh, so the sphere is interesting, you know, the upper hemisphere, the area is double the area of the disk. Okay, so that means uh, if you build a, a, a special house, you as the upper hemisphere, so the area covered, okay, is half of the area of the of the roof. Okay. The surface of the loof is going to be double the area of the, the area on the ground. Okay, so it's uh, that's what is the material you're going to use. Okay, but very it's not easy to build a, a, a spherical loof. The majority of the loof is uh, is not in that design. Okay, mm, but uh, there's an advantage to do, to build a spherical loof. Okay, someday if we build the houses on the moon, okay, most of them will be a spheric uh, loop. There's some reason for that, okay, much strong, you know, actually, and uh, it's not easy to be damaged, okay, from, uh, yeah, you can, uh, from a physics point of view, okay. So there's a, uh, this is another problem, you know, why we have to build a spheric loop. All right, uh, I, Stop here, and uh, I wish to uh, spend more time on the double integrals in the future. You know, every time, yeah. If you have a trouble to set up a double integrals, please do more exercise because this still be covered by the final exam, and also the problems we're going to discuss later, and eventually end up with the double integrals. Okay.